Hello, everyone. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio Network, which is a subsidiary of Global Media LLC. Our mantra at Passionate World Talk Radio Network is educate, enlighten, and entertain. The views of the guest may not represent those of the host of the station. Folks, you have to listen to my guest today. Phenomenal, phenomenal person. Um, I'm going to tell you about my guest. There's a lot to tell. Becky Large is an autism tech entrepreneur. She's an awareness and acceptance advocate, speaker and educator, CEO and founder of Champion Autism Network, CEO of the Autism Travel Club and Autism Traveler app. Becky Large has also is proud to announce a new partnership, um, the Autism Travel Club and Becoming Rentable is now a new partnership, and Becky's going to talk about that. Not only that, but Becky Large is part of a six-part docuseries, Traveling the Spectrum, and is also host of Large Impact, which is on YouTube. And I'm excited to have Becky on with me today. This is her fourth time on my show, so I'm very happy to have Becky Large on. Welcome back, Becky. To thank you Betsy. so much, Betsy. Right? You know, I thank you so much. Your continued interest and support means a ton. As you, as you know, you've got some great reach, and you're an amazing person, and I'm thrilled to be here. Well, thank you. It is my pleasure and honor. And to see how, I want to say how you've grown. I yeah. mean, you know, I interviewed you, uh, I think the first time was with, and my my mind just went <laughs> blank, um, with someone from Myrtle Beach, Julie. forgot her last name. Oh, uh, right. Uh, um yeah, me too. Sorry. I should know it. <laughs> uh, okay. She works for the um, chamber. <laughs> uh, God bless Julie. I love Julie. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, folks. Your mind goes blank. Um, yes, the chamber, she's um, manager of uh, public relations, or she was at that time at Myrtle Correct. Beach. Right. And um, what, you know, what you've done at Myrtle Beach to make the town autism friendly. And it's just incredible. And now you've branched off to having, I think the last time you were on, you had just launched the Autism Traveler Act or the Autism yeah, Travel time. Club. Yeah. Probably both. Yeah, we had just, Yeah. that was like we just launched. And, um, you know, we've made some great strides actually since then. Um, the app was one thing. <sighs> And now we have this really great, like, portal for when the businesses sign up. So now they can manage their own training programs and um, their uh, listings with our people and on their website. And so it's been really interesting. Like, we, we're building it while we're flying it, you know. Kind of crazy. That is so with ex- Julie, Julie Ellis. Julie Yes, the, yes. This chamber. Yes, yes. Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's right. Yeah. Uh, now that you mentioned Ellis, yes. I knew her first name was Julie. <laughs> yes, yep, yep. Um, <clears throat> that's what happens when you interview so many people. <laughs> that um, right? sometimes I can't get the whole the the whole name. But that was um and that was the first time I interviewed you and then I had you on by yourself because I wanted to people to know about how you became an advocate of uh, your son is on the spectrum and what I, I think in my own opinion I know this for myself personally Becky is that when you're given you know a circumstance situation your son is on the spectrum my son's on the spectrum my husband had Alzheimer's we become advocates we True. have to we can't keep our mouth shut <laughs> Because we want people to know about autism spectrum. We want people to be autism friendly. 
We want people to be dementia friendly. People, and I've, I, you know, I talked to many, many people. The basic, I believe, the basic things that people want, no matter who you are, is to be treated with respect and dignity. That's what people right. want. Right. And to feel safe and to feel part of a community. And your advocacy has helped that in the autism, I want to say the autism world, the autism um, community. Really, you have done um, so much, and I, I applaud you and tip my hat off to you, Becky, because the, the work you've done yeah. is just incredible. I'm just getting it's incredible. started. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been, <coughs> like I just wake up every day trying to figure out how to do more and be better and make more people happy. So it's kind of yeah. fun. Yeah, it, it is. And you know what? We feel, oh, I know I do. I feel good about helping other people. And one of the reasons for my show is to let people know there are resources out there. There are resources out there to help them have a better life. And I'll tell you, folks, I'm telling you, you got to go. It may not be proper English, but you have got to go on the Champion Autism uh, Network website and see all that there is uh, to offer. Now, I'm a a little uh, confused, Becky. Is the Autism Travel Club and the Autism Traveler app, is that information also on the Champion Autism Network website, or is that separate? So, yeah, if you go to the Champ- Champion Autism Network is like the premier ambassador and affiliate for the Autism Travel Club. Um, you know, all of the training modules were developed by Champion Autism Network, but it grew it grew beyond the mission of the organization. So we started the Autism Travel Club that has the Autism Traveler app. But, yes, you can on the homepage of the website, there's a big uh, button there that you can uh, click on and it'll take you to um, the Autism Traveler app and club for you to check out locations and download the app and all that fun stuff. And, folks, I highly recommend checking it out. And anyone going to Myrtle Beach, uh, if you have a member in your family on the autism spectrum, you definitely want to connect. You definitely want to know and there's many places, uh, businesses, hotels uh, that are autism friendly. And what is your partnership about with the Rentable? Oh, becoming Rentable. You know, that's mm-hmm. been um, a long time in the making. And um, becoming Rentable is an organization that want that uh, wants to make short term rentals. Um, inclusive and accessible, right? And so a lot of times people think about accessibility with mobility and wheelchairs. And the founder and CEO of Becoming Rentable is in a wheelchair as are her two sons. And so she's driven to a lot. There's, you know, all these things with accessibility with, um, you think about hotels and restaurants, right? The ADA. And, you know, you have to have ramps and doors a certain width and all these things, but there is none of that in the short-term rental industry. And, but, you know, you can imagine short-term rentals, vacation rentals are huge, whether it's Verbo, Airbnb, or property management companies. So they have a training program and we partnered with them on a um, autism, making your short-term rental autism ready and accessible. Um, so, you know, really a lot of it is communication, you know, letting us know what you have available in your short-term rental. Um, So it was really fun to finally work with them and figure out a way that we could do it that would satisfy both organizations and both efforts. I think it's good. That sounds, yeah, that sounds exciting. You brought up a point, Becky, I never thought of this. I mean, I know I'm going to uh, the bathroom and there's one handicapped uh, stall, 
right, in the bathrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you don't realize how limited handicapped parking is until you need that spot. I found that yeah. out uh, <laughs> real quick when I had the, the uh, placard for, for Matt because he had trouble walking far. And there's not many folks. There's not many handicapped parking spots. That's for sure. I think they need more. But I never thought yeah. until you just mentioned it, hotels with bathrooms that are accessible for people that well, are in wheelchairs. It is interesting because, you know, I, I'm part of a community of people who are working with physical disabilities and intellectual disabilities. And, you know, there are, there's a, a huge movement to making um, – everything more accessible and when it comes to wheelchairs you know like hotels will say that they have a handicap accessible room but you know you won't be able to in a wheelchair get over the lip into the shower you know even though it doesn't have a bathtub or get, you know be able to get out onto the balcony because of the lip there or there's nowhere they can wheel under comfortably um, you know, at a desk or a sink or things like that. There's a, there's so much. It's, a, it's truly amazing, and um, it's a great movement, but there's, there's a lot, a lot to do, a lot. Yes, that's really important, and, and I really never thought of it, probably because I didn't have to think right. about it, but, the, you know, but for the people who do have to think about it. That's important to know of, you know, where or places that are accessible. And I'll tell you folks, it, you know, it's true. You don't think about these things until you are in that situation. You really don't. And so another wonderful see. resource. Yes, definitely. <laughs> another wonderful resource to know. So thank you for part, part of it. I can't talk. The partners, there I go, with becoming uh, rentables. That is um, very important, you know, because we all take, we take things for granted. Let's face it. I know I did. Um, We take a lot for granted and and we shouldn't. And I think it's wonderful. I think the more people are accepted, no matter what their disability is, and are out in the public and open about it, I think it makes society better, in, in my opinion. Um, there's no, it should be acceptable. There should be no shame. And I've interviewed a lot of different people with uh, different disabilities, and it is a shame how they are treated. And how people that are in wheelchairs are ignored because people think they're in a wheelchair that they can't talk for themselves or think for themselves. And that's not true, folks. Uh, so please be respectful of people, no matter if you see them using a walker, a cane, being in a wheelchair. Please treat them with respect and dignity. That's what they, everyone deserves that. But I digress because I don't get on my soapbox. <laughs> um, and tell tell us about your uh, docu series, traveling the spectrum. That sounds interesting. Oh, that was really fun. You know, because we <coughs> we started the the movement here really um, in 2016, and the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce has been um, hugely helpful in amplifying our message. Um, and so. Um, they have a new chief marketing officer, and he does very different kind of, um, I guess, efforts and initiatives that, you know, not only educate people about autism or, you know, other things, but, you know, highlights Myrtle Beach also as a, an autism-friendly travel destination. So um, they had three families, three autism families, come to the Myrtle Beach area for a supported vacation experience and each family stayed for a week and they had one in North Myrtle Beach, Myrtle Beach and Surfside Beach. And I had the opportunity to meet all of them and work with them, um, you know, during the filming and 
so now we're just looking forward to having it um, picked up, you know, by Amazon or Hulu or Netflix or something. So we're really excited about that. It was going to be six 30-minute episodes, but there's so much good stuff they decided to make it six one-hour episodes. And um, I think they're actually getting ready to do season two. So it's very exciting. That is exciting. Uh, Because, you know, Becky, back when my son uh, was diagnosed and Josh is going to be 40 in July. Wow. Which (laughs) I can't believe. uh, There wasn't really a lot of acceptance. No. Um, back, you know, uh, then. And, of course, they blamed the, the mom, of course. Mm-hmm. And, you know, <laughs> they, people thinking, You're, what did you do wrong? The refrigerator mom. Right, right. Yes, oh. yes. Mm. And, you know, you would see people, maybe you might see a child or an older adult yelling out loud. And, you know, people judge, oh, you know, oh, you're not disciplining them. It's so good to see that autism really, and I've heard public announcements about autism lately a lot, that yeah. it's being brought out more in the public. It's being accepted more, I, I, I want to say, for lack of a better yeah. term. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, I think it's great. I think it's great that... Um, there are, I, I wish there would be more friendly uh, autism and Alzheimer's uh, friendly places for people to vacation and to uh, feel safe and not have to uh, wait in line. I, I have a funny story to tell. <laughs> this was, um, I had to go to a motor vehicle for Josh to get his state license, and it was freezing out. And it had snowed that morning. And uh, I had to bring that with us. And I said to the guy, I said, can we please move to the front of the line? My husband has Alzheimer's. And he said, would well, you have proof? I said, no, I don't have proof on me. I said, take a look at him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think I'm making it up? And right. he, he moved us up. <laughs> he moved us up. But it, it's really, you know, like even with Josh, he was very sensitive to noise, and he would cry. Balloon, you know, suddenly popping at a birthday party. Oh God, yeah. Um, you know, even a, a movie. Um, he was even afraid of Sesame Street for a while. Some of the characters mm-hmm. uh, scared him. So these are things that people don't understand unless they are living with someone who is on a spectrum. True. <coughs> Excuse me. Or they take our um, but I, <laughs> Yes. Yes. Oh, f- <laughs> definitely. I, I, I hope, Becky, that people, companies hear this uh, podcast or see my post in LinkedIn about this show and contact you. Because I think as, you know, they have uh, the diversity and inclusion, and what's that other one? Uh, equity. Diversity, equity, that, and inclusion, and now with the belonging, D-E-I-B, you got to get the B. The belonging. Oh, belonging. Oh, I didn't hear yeah, that. Yeah, D-E-I-B. I didn't hear yeah, that one. New one. Oh, they're coming up with the <laughs> every day, God bless them. So, you know, that's what I say about autism, right? You know, for the, for the businesses, it truly is as far as accessibility goes and DEI initiatives, autism is truly like the low hanging fruit, right? You don't, there isn't any ADA compliance. You learn a few tips and tricks from the training and then you generally lead with love and just be kind and you've got this, right? It's, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's just not, but it is a misunderstood disorder. And, you know, that's what we're here to, you know, educate, here, there, and everywhere, business owners and communities, right, and destinations on, you know, the needs and accommodations of our families. Yes, yes, and I really hope businesses connect with you and take the the training and that more companies will 
include belonging. Oh, thanks for telling me that. I didn't hear that one. Um, right. Because pe- <laughs> it's important. People can, you know, people can work. My son works for a bus company, um, school bus company. And this bus company is, they hire a lot of different people with different disabilities. A lot. The, the aides. And they are so good to their employers, employees, a great employer. Um, they're just very understanding. And I wish all companies were understanding of right. people's uh, disabilities. You know, you know, like I'm not talking about, I know a person has to be able to do the job and maybe they can do the job with a little extra training, a job coach there. Um, I know companies, you know, you had to be able to, to do the job, but you know, some people can do the job with just a little extra training, a little extra help. I had a, well, Josh had an experience where he worked for a store, I won't mention the name, um, in the mall. And he told them, you know, the availability, Josh had a job coach. And they were nice to him at first, and then they changed his hours, which wasn't part of his availability. And then they told him he couldn't have his job coach. And then they made him very nervous. And I said, Josh, quit that job. And I called up the hunter line, and I said, you know, if you're going to hire people with disabilities, you need to work with them. Yeah. You need to work with their availability when they tell you that. And you need to let them have their job coach with them to help them be able to be successful. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but after that, they cleaned house there. So they had right. a whole new staff. Right. They should but have. That was, and um, it's interesting because, like, with our training, <clears throat> uh, you know, we have these businesses that the managers and employees are trained and aware, right? So the next step, in in my mind is employment opportunities. So, but it's much different to hire somebody with autism or people with autism um, be, due to, you know, them becoming overwhelmed and everything. And so, like, uh, you know, where traditional employment is what, a shift is what, eight hours, right? So you have one person for eight hours or whatever. And now, you know, somebody with autism, they might only be able to tolerate two, maybe three hours. Um, So you're going to need, you know, three, maybe four people to cover that eight hours, but the productivity that you will get from the focus and loyalty and, you know, just uh, autism employees generally are on time, you know, focused, know what needs to be done after they learn. Um, So that's our next thing. And actually April 19th, we're holding um, like kind of an employment seminar with the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce that's going to be streamed live. We have a high-functioning autism employment advocate, Greg Rosen, who lives up in Massachusetts, coming down. And then we have a special needs instructor who's coming to talk about internship opportunities with her, you know, some of her students with autism. So we're really hoping that employers and human resource people will you know, either attend online virtually um, to learn more about that because it's really important, as you know, as you've witnessed. Yes, yes. And I also find, too, Becky, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way because I just don't know how else to put it, and I am a Jersey girl. Um, many people, if not all on the spectrum, they look what you would consider by society's standards as normal. Yeah. But a lot of people, and I know my son does, has a trouble, difficulty in processing information. So they might look like they understand, but they don't. And then they're embarrassed to tell their employer or someone else that they don't understand. And I always told Josh, Josh, if you don't understand something, you need to tell the person right. that to explain it to you maybe in a different way to talk slower because it's better to tell someone you don't understand than that you do understand and and you really don't. And then you don't know how to do what they want you to do or what is expected from you. 
And I think that is a a huge problem. Um, What's your opinion on that, Becky? Well, in our trainings, we actually um, have something that says, you know, people with autism process information one-third more slowly than neurotypical people. So as you're having a conversation, they've already missed a third of it. So it's really important to, like you said, you've got to be clear in what you're trying to say and, you know, no rapid-fire questions, you know, like just understanding that and, you know, giving them time to absorb instruction or, you know what I mean, um, is it's, right. it's really important. It's really important because, you know, I go through, you know, my my son's, you know, great, but he's still autistic. And, you know, I I am a Jersey girl. And, you know, you'd think after almost 21 years Yay. that I would have learned <laughs> to not to do the, you know, like these rapid fire questions, but I can't help myself. Right. You know, so right. it's 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 not easy to remember these things, even as a parent. Uh, you know, and then as a coworker or a business manager, you know, they're busy doing other things and trying to remember that is also, um, that's like what like you said, trying to train our, our kids and our people with autism to be self-advocates, right? Yes. Ask for what you need. Greg Rosen, the, the um, high-functioning autistic who's coming down from um, – Massachusetts, two, two master's degrees, speaks four languages. He was a first responder, which is crazy for somebody with autism. You know, Order of the Arrow with the Boy Scouts. Um, all these amazing things. Went to Wales on his own to get one of his graduate degrees. Like, I, just an incredible, fearless person with autism. Still, with all that, it took him until he was 32 to get a job. <clears throat> And that's why wow. he's such an advocate because it, it starts with the interview. But, you know, Greg asked for what he needs. Greg has a penchant for penguins, okay? He has stuffed penguins all over his office, like everywhere. And so when he gets stressed out, he, you know, he hangs out with his penguins. He travels with a suitcase of stuffed penguins. When he comes to do this, you know, this um, – Oh, folks, um, just got disconnected for a bit, and uh, hopefully Becky will join us uh, shortly, and I highly recommend going on YouTube to check out her podcast, uh, Large Impact. Hi, Becky. Yes, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Drop call. Oh, my God. Hi. I'm back. It's okay. Are you still recording? That's okay. Yes, yes, I am Liz. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, good. Well, hello. Sorry. So, anyway, Greg, when he's presenting, will have at least one penguin with him there, and that it, when he gets uncomfortable, he will go and touch the penguin's head. And, like, so, um, you know, this is – you know, some things that employers are going to have to accommodate, but it's, it's not hurting anybody, right? You know, so it's, it's just interesting. Everybody's different. Yes, yes. Some people um, with the stimming, maybe they need a, a paper clip yeah. or a piece of string to uh, con themselves uh, down. I just... You know, it, it just thrills my heart. I know you're a solo Jersey girl, so I got to mention that two Jersey girls together. Um, very out, <laughs> um, we're very outspoken, and we we do tend to talk fast. And I know I have to slow myself down with, with, with Josh, and I had to do that with with Matt also. And it thrills my heart when. I see people, like you mentioned, uh, Greg Rosen, just, you know, being out there and advocating for themselves and to say, you know what, I deserve to have a job too. I'm here. I can be of the, I'm, I have worth. Everyone has worth. 
and to you know just to accept people where they're at and you know make the accommodations um i think workplaces should maybe have uh i would i want to call it cue cards maybe like maybe index cards with reminders of what the job what they're supposed to do or are supposed to do that day um or maybe you know if the person has a job coach they could uh, assist with that but right. i think people should be given an opportunity and you're right i mean my son does not like to miss work at all and he very seldom misses and he has to be really sick to miss work that's for sure you're not going to find a more loyal employee than someone in my opinion who has some kind of a disability they are there early and they will do the job and they are reliable That's and true. from what i hear um finding reliable <clears throat> excuse me reliable people these days is difficult to find <coughs> yeah, well yeah i mean excuse everybody's me. stuck in wind with hu- human resources right you know so yeah. um i remember last spring you know because I live in a, a, a beach, you know, community destination where, you know, the population swells by 10. And it's, you know, since COVID, it's always been pack your patients, right? And there, everybody is in need of human resources. So last spring, you, I was contacted by people at restaurants. Quick, give us some people. And there's, but there's nothing quick about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's something right. that you got to start. You, they they should have started, like, now, right? So hiring and getting people you know, to understand what their role is and comfortable in their position and all that stuff. So it's not a quick fix for sure, but it is something that, you know, if there was planning involved, um, you know, could be hugely helpful because right now 80 to 85% of people with autism are unemployed or underemployed. I mean, and that's millions of people. And right now they're being supported by, you know, the government, you know, think about, the savings, you know, if we could just invest a little bit of time to get them employed, think about what could be accomplished and how much money, billions of dollars could be saved by employing people with autism. Yes, yes, definitely. I know my supermarket, I won't mention the name, but my local supermarket hires a lot of people also who have um, various disabilities. And I know the, they've been there for a very long time some of the uh, people, very long time. And they're being part of society. They're contributing. And, yeah. I, I, you know, I think it, it's, it's great. Everybody wants to feel part of a community. They want to contribute to society. And right. Everybody wants to feel like they belong. Yep. Exactly. Becky, please tell us about your, your podcast. Uh, large okay. impact. I know it's um, on YouTube. Um, tell us about your show. I'm going to have to catch it. I'm going to have to watch it. You might it. have to be on it. I think I might have to, <laughs> Thank I might you. Have to do it. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> large impact. It's, I love it. I interview people who have a large impact. You know, my last name is Large, so it's great. You know, Large Impact is awesome. <laughs> um, but, you know, and it's not necessarily autism. Right. It, it isn't, it isn't, it is. So, you know, I managed to weave that in because that's my jam. But, um, you know, it's it's just talking to industry leaders who are affecting change. You know, I, I did interview Lorraine Woodward, who's the CEO of Becoming Rentable, who I mentioned, you know, we're in partnership with and her efforts, uh, you know, to improve accessibility um, for, you know, all, neurodivergent people, people with physical disabilities, um, that's great. I interviewed um, uh, John Stage, who is also um, in a wheelchair, and he does um, uh, supported, I guess, tours all over the world. He travels all over the world and, you know, helping people with accessibility in wheelchairs. And then also he's working, there's a, a commission that he's on with the United States government working on things like that, so that's kind of fun. So a number of different people. And then um, 
Irene, and I, I can't pronounce her last name, she is um, a, my like kind of sister out there in Nairobi, Kenya, where she has an autistic daughter, and she's trying to spread autism awareness over there. And somehow we got connected a couple years ago, and she loves the videos and the training modules. So we are making one of those <clears throat> in Kiswahili, and I've I've yet to launch, I have to launch hers. I was going to do that this week, her Large Impact podcast, because it's so interesting. I mean, going from first world country to third world country, the, 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 the biggest hurdle she has, or anybody with autism, I guess, there has, is it starts with the church. The church believes in these different tribes that, that the person with autism, when they have a cancer or a meltdown, is possessed by evil spirits. So mm. they have an exorcism, right? So, like, what's going to happen in an exorcism? The person with autism is going to have, a, you know, a, a meltdown, right, and a tantrum, and they're going to go, woohoo, we did it, we exercised the spirits, but then the behavior won't change. So these people are, like, stuffed in the corner. Nobody knows what to do with them. You know, they, they're considered, you know, pariah. And so I, I can't imagine the battle she has the uphill battle because it's so ingrained in their culture. Um, but so Tulane, Africa, so look for that. Um, that's going to be really great. Uh, and I'm just hoping that we can, you know, make some people more comfortable and happy over that way too. Yeah, that's really, wow, that's something. That kind of reminds me of back in the old days in America where they thought people had epilepsy had demons and they would lock them yep. up in the attic or basement somewhere. Mm, yep. um, that is, and even in the remote places, even with um, Alzheimer's and to me, autism and Alzheimer's, have, yeah. there's a lot of similar things there yep. um, that they, you know, don't accept that right. this person has a, a brain uh, issue um, that their uh, brain is dying, and I'll, I'll tell you. And I know, I know I've said this before on um, uh, my show, and I'm really uh, proud of Josh because Josh was such a kick-ass caregiver to his dad, and proud, proud to have been a caregiver, and understood. Now this is the funny part, folks. And yeah, I got a twisted sense of humor. Josh understood more about um, Alzheimer's than so-called intelligent people. And he would tell me a lot of times, people don't get it, do they, Mom? They don't understand. Oh. Out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> right. Uh, <clears throat> that's for sure. Um, well, Becky, you are so busy. How do you take care of you? What do you do to take care of yourself? Uh, I try and be very intentional in uh, planning my time and calendar. And um, we call them speed dates and speed vacations, right? Because we live at the beach. So, you know, um, we'll have a speed date at uh, one of our favorite restaurants that has a beautiful view uh, or a speed vacation. We might like spend the day at the beach. It doesn't happen often, but I did take a nap yesterday. So that was lovely. <laughs> so, you know, we just try and, you know, do what we can, and, um, you know, it, it doesn't feel like work to me, you know. So I do have to be careful, though. I, I do have to take care of myself because if I don't, no one will. So everybody can do it. That's do it with true. me. <laughs> That's true because, you know, if we get burnt out, we're not mm. good to ourselves or anyone else. Becky Large, it's such a pleasure and an honor talking to you and for you to come on my show um, as busy as you are and share your up-to-date, exciting information, where can people contact you to learn about um, these various training programs uh, for so businesses? You, yeah, so um, the training programs, uh, you can go to autismtravel.club. Um, you can contact me uh, or championautismnetwork.com. You can get back and forth to either place. And, uh, you know, my emails are Becky at championautismnetwork.com. 
or Becky at AutismTravel.club. And I'm happy to help spread widely. I'm, you know, I'm here to serve. And if you have questions about autism or, or if I can be of any service, please let me know. Well, uh, thank you so much. You are the woman. <laughs> you are... <laughs> I'm sorry, you are the woman of the hour. You are (laughs) phenomenal. And uh, the work that you have done, the work that you're doing, and I know that with your future endeavors, work that you will do uh, for the autism community and even the non-autism community, just getting a community together to accept the autism community, the beautiful it's just beautiful, and I know you have a beautiful heart, Becky, and I know we never met in person, but I'm giving you a hug through the airways. Right and, here, baby. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, and um, just, you know, best wishes um, in all that you do. And, folks, you heard Becky Large today, and I really want to encourage you to go to the website, all the information about uh, Becky Large and the Travel Autism Travel Club and the Autism Traveler app uh, will be in the blog as well as the channel to her um, podcast, Large Impact. And I am going to watch that myself because I knew you had a podcast, but I didn't know the name or where it was. But I do believe in promoting people helping support people, because you know what, folks? We're all in this together. We are all in this together to support each other. And I just think it's another wonderful resource. And that's what I'm here for. That's what Chatting with Becky is about, is providing people a resource. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) Thank thank you so much, Becky. Um, Thank you. And uh, we all on the blog that Jeannie White, who's station manager, uh, writes, and Jeannie produces the show. I always thank Jeannie. And, of course, all this would not be possible without Lillian Caldwell, who's CEO of Passion World Talk Radio. And uh, thank Lillian for making this all possible. Excuse me. (coughs) And thank you, folks, for listening, subscribing. If you don't already, subscribe to Johnny Gribetti. It is for free on Spotify, Spreaker, Apple, Amazon Music, to name a few. And please subscribe. Tell your friends about Chatting with Betsy. If you know anyone in the autism community, if you are a business owner and you want to learn about how to be inclusive, how you can have someone with autism in your employment, contact Becky Large. Um, I can't impress that enough. We need to accept people for who they are and what they can do. And I can't say that enough. And I won't apologize for it either because I believe that strongly about it. Get choked up. Um, I'm thankful that an employer gave my son an opportunity. And he's been there 17, I believe, going to be 17 years in October. Um, wow. Pretty sure. Um, and I just am so grateful, and I'm grateful to be able to do this show. And as I always tell people, I do have a support group, hashtag kick, Alzheimer's ass movement. You're all welcome. Anyone wants to follow me, I am on Facebook, Betsy E. Wurzel, W-U-R-Z-E-L. And as I always say at the end of my show, in a world where you can be anything, please be kind. And shine your light bright, because we need it now more than ever. And until we chat again, be kind, be safe. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio, which is a subsidiary of Global Media, LLC. Bye-bye now.